Hey, yo, what's shaking? Once again, this is Mr. Cab Cabernet. That's Chef Cabernet to you. And welcome to another episode of Cab Cabernet's Diner of the Day. How you doing? Good to see you. Now, what do we have here? Hmm. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take you uh, all the way to uh, Toscana. Ciao, bella. With a uh, simple but effective margarita. And uh, there's a party going on in my pad today. So welcome to Chateau de Cabernet. Stay tuned. Mr. Cabernet, Mr. Cab Cabernet, Mr. Cab Cabernet, Mr. Cab Cabernet, Mr. Cabernet. If you know anything about Mr. Cabernet, I love pizza. And since I've learned how to make pizza years ago, um, I've never looked back. I make much better pizzas than... The average mother Fletcher who think they can make good pizzas. I'm going to show you, okay? Because I'm going to show and the proven. This recipe is a simple recipe. You can make this at home. It's good for families or, or if, you know, you just want to sit back uh, with a glass of wine, you know, preferably something red. But it calls for yeast, as you can see. we got the rapid rise, rise yeast, which is faster than normal instant yeast um we got the all-purpose flour we got the fresh basil or basil if you're a aristocrat and we got uh red onions uh assortment of sweet peppers olive oil salt and pepper mozzarella cheese and four cheese mexican we're gonna do a little twist on it i like to mix my cheeses uh but it's gonna be mar margarita style with the garlic and of course um Peeled plum tomatoes. This is what you want. You don't, we're not doing a, I don't buy jar sauce, uh, ragu, or what have you. Never mind. Instead of that processed stuff, this is a homemade pizza. And the sauce is boss, 100%. So first things first, because we're making a yeast uh, fresh dough, the dough is going to take about an hour to actually rise after we put it together, you know? So let's get started first with, with the actual dough. Give me like five minutes to prep this dough and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. So let's get into this dough, okay? First things first, you need a bowl, uh, extra large bowl like this, something like this, doesn't matter what material, plastic, uh, steel, whatever, glass. You need your all-purpose flour, you need a little bit of olive oil, you need your sea salt, and you need your yeast. And that's basically the uh, ingredients for the dough. And you can you can put garlic in the dough. You can put cilantro, thyme, whatever you want to put in your dough. That's up to you. Or you could just leave it, you know, leave it without anything. So a cup of water. Just leave this here. We're gonna do a um, single pizza, okay? Uh, this will be like an extra large size, eight eight slices, but it's going to be big. So this is the recipe for this. You can also make calzones with this dough as well. And I'll do a calzone uh, full episode another time. This is the pizza. So we got one cup. 
all-purpose flour. We got two cups. And then we got a half, so two and a half cups. All right? Okay. Yep. And then we will do the yeast. You want to do the dry ingredients first, just start baking anything else, you know. The dry ingredients need to mix together uh, before you add the water and the oil. So what this yeast is doing, keep in mind, yeast is a living organism. You get what I'm saying? So it's alive. And what it's going to do is it's going to make the dough rise when the heat hits it. But that that is due to it being mixed with the sugar, the sugar activates the yeast, as well as the water. So we have the yeast, we have the flour, okay? We need about a teaspoon of salt, okay? I don't really need a teaspoon because I'm Chef Cabernet and I've been doing this a long time. So I can measure my hand. This is strong salt. This is a little less than a teaspoon. It's very strong sea salt. Um, but you know, don't be afraid to use a teaspoon if you're not a chef. And we also need uh, one teaspoon of sugar. I'm gonna use cane sugar, raw uh, cane sugar for this. Again, don't really need uh, a teaspoon measure in hand but that's about a teaspoon okay now that's the dry ingredients basically that's that so we got the dry now we're gonna add in one cup of warm water and some olive oil That's about two tablespoons. Again, measure it if you're not sure, but two tablespoons is good. So, now we mix. Now we mix. Now what you want to happen here What's going to happen is that this is going to turn into a moist, soft, Play-Doh-like substance, okay? It's warm because the water's warm, so once it sticks to this, that's fine. This is the consistency you want. So after it starts creating, you know, making a dough, you're gonna knead it with your hands. You don't need the mixer anymore. And again, you can use a hand mixer, you can use a, a whisk, you can use a wooden spoon, um, whatever you have on hand should work. You don't have to go shopping to make this, this dish. It's a very simple dish. So then once we, we have our dough, we got the foundation. What we're gonna do is knead it, okay? For about five minutes. Um, this is the consistency that I'm looking for. Now, kneading it is, is a very important part of the dough because what you're doing is you're teasing the yeast, okay? You're, you're, you're activating the yeast and making it actually, um, easier to manage and set, right? And this is how it mixes with the sugar and the water and comes alive. Because what we have to do after this kneading is we have to, we have to put it away. Uh, rapid, this rapid use only calls for about an hour, right? So we're gonna have to put it away for an hour covered, put it in a, a Ziploc plastic bag. You know, you could punch it, you know, 
times, you know, you can fold it, and you can squeeze it, knead it, squish it, you know, it doesn't matter. What we're trying to do again is just mix all these ingredients together and soften up this dough. Um, that's what we're doing here. So again, five minutes of this, then we create the, the dough ball and uh, put it away for an hour. So we'll be back in five minutes. Stay tuned. Crushed grapes is a lifestyle, the lifestyle of enjoying life. Many of us aspire to this lifestyle. This is our standard. If you have a passion for wine, cigars, music, fashion, art, business, pleasure, or leisure, you are part of the lifestyle consumer community. Crushed Grapes Lifestyle, Harlem, USA, by Cab Cabernet. Yes, so, as you can see here, we have a almost perfect dough ball, right? It is uh, almost perfect consistency, what I'm looking for. So, drop this in here, right? And what we're going to do now is we're going to put it in a Ziploc bag and let it sit for an hour, right? But first, we want to add a little bit of olive oil, just a drop. Because what this does, and then I'm going to roll it all around. Basically, you want to basically cover the entire dough ball lightly with olive oil. That's really what we're doing with that olive oil. Okay. And what that's going to do, it's going to act as a moisture agent. Okay. For the rising process of the dough while it's inside of the Ziploc bag. So this is covered, as you can see, it's nice and moist and shiny, right? It's covered one time over. Now we take it, put it in this bag like so, right? And leave air in the bag. So don't smash the bag, like leave air. So because what's happened, what's gonna happen to this dough after an hour, it's gonna grow to about double its size. So it needs space to grow. And then we just sip this over here, okay? And um, let it grow. It should be in a room temperature or a little warmer than room temperature area. This oven, you know, turn it on warm and just let it sit there for an hour. It's gonna grow and rise. Now, let's get to the sauce while that dough sits. Let's go over here. Right. Now, for the sauce, let us begin, since we have these here, let's begin with the peppers. It really doesn't matter what you begin with. We don't need to do um, the whole pepper because we're doing basically three different peppers, so we can just do you know, uh, small cuts of each. And just give them a twice over. We want it not too chunky, but you know, like maybe. These peppers are sweet. You know? This is about flavor. Um, these peppers bring a sweetness to it. You know, there's a few different components to making a good pasta sauce or uh, pizza sauce, calzone sauce. You know, you can use this sauce for all of those. Any spaghetti, pasta, a pizza, calzone. It's the same sauce. It really is. So we got the sweetness and this this red onion is a little sweet as well red onion is delicious delicious let's just cut a little more fine and you don't need a whole lot of it and all of this just sits together like this 
sits over here together. Okay, we have, once again, we have some jar garlic. Let's pull some out. We're gonna put it all together here, so I'm putting it all together. All right, a little extra garlic. I can never have enough garlic, honestly. Then we'll do this here. Now we're gonna just put all this stuff here. I got the onions, the pepper. Now, let's deal with these tomatoes. These are whole Roma tomatoes or uh, plum tomatoes, depending on how you, you know, what you call them. But we wanna basically use maybe half the can or almost half the can. And that's half the water, the, the, the juice as well. So that's maybe one, two, three, four tomatoes. Yeah, and half the juice. That will leave you another maybe four inside with half of that juice. So again, this is my secret uh, additive to my sauce. This is uh, not for the faint of heart. But this is a little balsamic vinegar glaze, right? Add a little zing to it, a little, little tanginess. Also, a little salt and tomato paste. You get a little thickness and salt. We'll put some onion powder. We'll do a tomato basil seasoning, which is a mixture of, it's like an all-purpose tomato basil seasoning. Have some red pepper in there, um, all kind of different stuff. Uh, paprika. We'll do some fresh ground black pepper. And uh, we'll finish it off with um, some Italian seasoning. Okay, which is gonna give us the herbs, some rosemary, uh, thyme, marjoram, uh, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And a little heat component, a little cayenne, okay? Yeah, why not? Some like it, huh? And uh, we'll top it off with the olive oil, of course. Maybe three tablespoons. Um, that goes over here, okay? That goes over here. sink to be mixed and uh, we have to cut the tomatoes a little bit as well and I'll show you what I mean so slice here okay we slice the tomatoes they're very soft because they've been in the in the, in the can we want them sliced. We don't want them whole, but we also don't want them ground into a puree. We want them so that when you put it in, you know, when you put it on the actual dough for the crust, we want to see uh, little pieces of tomato. And that is traditional margarita style uh, pizza. Hardy, it's rustic, it's old world style. And while I'm cutting this, as you can see, everything's mixing together. It's not really thick, it's like medium thick, right? This is what you want it to look like, something like this. That's it. Heavy on the, the tomatoes, but all these ingredients are in here. And um, yeah, 
spice hits you in the back, in the back of the palate. Yeah. All the herbs are there. Okay, that's the sauce. We got the dough sitting over here waiting to grow. Okay, we have the sauce sitting waiting to be painted upon the dough. And we got this basil waiting for it all. Another 45 minutes for this dough. Don't go too far. Be right back. Stay tuned. We have the oven set to 450. It's preheated for the last, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes. It's good and hot, right? So we want a nice roaring oven. Ooh. Right, so we're gonna take this ball, okay? Now, what I like to do, you know, you might see the guys at the pizzeria, mamma mia. You might see them, uh, throwing the, the dough up in the air and, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. Some people roll it with a, dough, uh, a rolling pan. What I do here is I put it right on the pan and I add a little uh, flour so it doesn't stick, but also a little bit of uh, cornmeal, stone ground cornmeal. The cornmeal, you may have tasted this in certain pizzerias that put cornmeal on the, on the pan uh, and sometimes even in the dough, but they put it in the pan so that it gives a little crunch, right? A little crunch to uh, the actual bottom of the crust, which is uh, a nice texture. It's a nice uh, addition there. So this is what we're going to do with this dough, all right? This is how we're going to do it. You're going to, this takes a little, a little learning, you know, uh, trial, trial and error type stuff. But, you know, you want to stretch it out, you know, a little bit by hand, just like so, in a round motion, right? And then, once you got a little circle like this, right? You just flatten it out here in the pan. Okay? So, now, what we're going to do is just... We're gonna push it and turn the pan. And you can smell this, you can smell the yeast. It's important to turn it while you're pushing because what you're doing is you're, you, you're keeping the circle. Right? Again, we're pushing out, right? This can take, you know, a good five minutes or so depending on how big your pan is, it's important to, to find your method. Everybody has a different method of, you know, making crust. There are different countries that make crust different ways. You know, again, you see the Italian pizzerias uh, throwing it in the air. Pizza, this is a, you know, FYI moment. Pizza, comes from the word pita. I'll say it again. Let that roll around in your brain. Pizza comes from the word pita. Pita bread, right? Think about it. They look alike, right? If you understand pita and where pitas come from and what, you know, what countries specialize in pita, those same countries specialize in pizza. Believe me, they do. Eat some of their pizza. Tell me what you think about that. Now, right here, take a, one spoon is all you need. A spoon like this, one of these soup spoons, right? Like nice little helping, dump it on like that and just clockwise circular motion from the inside out. 
large circles. As you get to the edges, you, you turn it because you want to spread it. This is a margarita. It's very sauce centric. It's not cheese centric. That's why when you order a margarita, you can actually see the sauce. And you see basically uh, areas of cheese. You know what I'm saying? It's not cheese centric. Now that is that Mexican blend, which is a blend of Monterey Jack, cheddar, asadero, and queso quesadilla. Okay? So let's do the four cheese blend first. And again, margarita, you don't put it all over, you put it in certain spots. Okay? If you like a spot, Spot there, spot there, spot there. You can also, you know, use the fresh sliced cheese, which comes like a circle. Spot there, spot there, spot there. That's basically the spots, right? Those all the spaces. Now this cheese is going to melt and spread, expand. And because of where we're putting the cheese, there'll be more cheese in certain spaces. That's where the margarita is. So we have the mozzarella. Spot. 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 Okay? Spot. That's it. That's it. Now, for the for the uh, finishing touch, the margarita is not a margarita without fresh basil. Okay, fresh basil. You put each one on the uh, cheese spot there. One leaf. So you need one leaf on each one. So nice big leaves. smell delicious. Wow. Take this mm -hmm. Yes. Now, to the oven we go. Let's mix up this a little bit here. A little bit here. Touch up this crust here. on the bottom rack, okay, all the way in the back. This should take about 10 minutes because the oven is fire hot. This is gonna take about, I say, 10 minutes. We'll be right back after these messages. Stay tuned. Now, now, now. Nah, nah, this ain't the same old rhyme, the same old style, the same old lame old plain profile. But pick up a seat and stick around for a while. You are now living the crush grapes lifestyle. Now all I'm trying to say is it's a new day. So flip the souffle and sip the cuvee like... Sniff the bouquet, some say salute, some say sante. Slide to the side, Joe, clear the way. Cause Cab Cabernet is here to stay. The females, hey, shake it to shake. We live the lifestyle every day. Homeboys, rock with your crew, sway. We live the lifestyle every day. We live the lifestyle every day. We live the lifestyle every day. This is the finale. So we're gonna do uh we're gonna do a, a dressing for the salad, okay? Homemade mm -hmm. dressing, uh garlic balsamic vinaigrette. This pizza's in the oven and uh, 
while while that's making McLovin, we will do this here. Uh, what we do need is some olive oil, okay, first. You know, that should be enough. That's the good stuff. Okay. Then we're gonna do some garlic with garlic juice. This is we're gonna do some salt-free seasoning, which has garlic powder, lemon zest, uh, different herbs like thyme, and there's orange peel, black pepper, crushed red pepper, parsley flakes, lemon oil, all that kind of stuff. That's good stuff. Black pepper. Now this will go nice with the sauce. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what we've done here. What you want, you want a fingerprint. Yeah. You can hear that crust, courtesy of the bottom rack. You hear that? That's the crust, that's the crunch you want, see? Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a taste. Here. As you can see, a little char on the bottom. Mmm. You know that crunch? Voila. Listen. I'm about to get busy. This is like hour and a half meal. Um, including the prep, it's all worth it. Take the extra mile for the uh, for the homemade. It's cheaper than the store bought. It just takes a little more time, a little more love. Once again, this is Mr. Cab Cabernet, Chef Cabernet to you. This is another episode of Cab Cabernet's Dine of the Day, the Mamma Mia Margarita. And uh, stay tuned for more episodes on Crushed Grapes TV. And this is Chef Cabernet reminding you that eating well is living well. Bon appetit. Cheers. Mr. Cabernet, Mr. Cab 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 Cabernet